Hi friends, this is Debbie from Real Fun Family and Real Deep Faith. I'm so glad that you have joined me this week for this Easter week devotional as we've walked through looking at all of the names of God. And today we have another name to look at. It's an important day. It's Good Friday. And I hope that you're taking some time to remember Jesus' sacrifice on this day. Today is a great remembrance of the name that Jesus gave to his disciples about himself just before he died. And that is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6 offers a trinity of names in Jesus' next I Am declaration. On Thursday night at dinner with his 12 disciples, Jesus proclaimed, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Another word picture for their memory book. He knew that the disciples would need this in the dark days after his death. So how many ways are there to God? Only one. Jesus is the way. And where does truth originate? Jesus is God. And therefore, he is truth. This morning when I woke up, I was thinking, you know, about 2,000 years ago, on this night, Jesus was up all night long. I was waking from a very restful sleep. I had enjoyed sleeping through the night and I thought about Jesus. He did not have that luxury. He had been arrested and he had in already endured an entire night of beatings and mockings and suffering. And by eight o'clock in the morning, the death sentence had been proclaimed. The walk to Calvary began the blood was flowing, Jesus was weakened, and he was carrying a very heavy cross. At nine o'clock, he was nailed to that cross and was lifted up and it was dropped into position. Insults and mocking continued. Jesus remained silent. At noon, darkness shrouded the land, lasting for three hours. What must it have been like to see darkness descend during the middle of the day? Sometime before three o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus said, It is finished. And he breathed his last breath. Two events happened immediately. An earthquake shook the ground for miles. Rattling graves opened everywhere. Secondly, at the moment of his death, the heavy solid curtain that hung in the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. God himself ripped that curtain. He destroyed the dividing wall, signifying a new way to know God through the sacrifice of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who gave himself once and for all. As you thought of surrender yesterday, today on Good Friday, it's good to think of sorrow. Allow yourself the time to imagine the excruciating pain and the suffering endured by the Son of God on your behalf. Called the man of sorrows because he carried our griefs, Jesus paid our debt, yours and mine and that of the entire human race for all of history. Might you slow your pace today and ponder the losses he felt, the crushing weight of your sin, the pain of all your hurt. If you allow yourself to feel some of what Jesus felt, some of what his family and disciples felt, you will be better prepared for the great joy to come in just two days. Friends, we're just two days away from the most amazing gift that anyone has ever given, the gift of eternal life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Savior. I am so excited, and yet today I am taking that time to slow down and to think about what Jesus did just for me. 
I hope you'll do the same. And I hope that you will enjoy this weekend and celebrate. Even though this is a difficult time in the history of the world, I pray that you will celebrate Sunday with all of your energy and all of your might because it truly is something to be celebrated. Have a great day.